This episode of Chat Chow is sponsored by Fever Tree, the natural premium mixer. Stay tuned after the show to see Fever Tree mix into a dark and stormy cocktail. Welcome to Chat Chow TV, a weekly online show featuring the city's top food personalities. In today's episode, we're here in Logan Square to meet with chef and owner Matthias Merges and learn all about his restaurant, You Show. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Sure. It's a pleasure to be here at U Show finally. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having us. Um, could you tell us what we're going to open up with here? What are we well, we're gonna, drinking? We're going to toast to a, uh, our own take on a Negroni and something that uh, Alex Bachman, our chief mixologist, made up the, uh, called the Undertone. And what is exactly in mind? So the Undertone is a uh, whiskey-based cocktail with uh, peach and Szechuan peppercorn bitters. Ooh, sounds like a good combo. Mm -hmm. So cheers. Cheers. Welcome. Thank you. That is so refreshing and I love the little spicy kick. Exactly. Makes Especially for the end of the summer. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. So Chef, could you tell me a little bit about your background? I know you have an extensive culinary background. Yes. Uh, I was uh, sh executive chef and director of operations for Charlie Trotters for 14 years. Before that, I was... Uh, worked around the United States and went through Europe and Asia and working at the best places I possibly could. And uh, then about two years ago, we decided to come out and uh, try it on our own. And uh, through the inspirations of our travels, especially through Asia and Japan, we, uh, we came up with uh, Yusho. Okay. And this is our kind of our, our own personal expression of what we enjoyed about our travels. And what were the special things that you picked up along the way in your travels in Japan? I think it's more the simplicity of uh, product and the, the, the clean, true flavors of products that are in season and some really great cooking methods that typically you don't see in the United States, like bincho uh, coal that's used in our grills, uh, takoyakis, so different kind of molds to make things. And we wanted to have fun with that and play with that. And this is what we came up with. Well, very nice. And the space here is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You have two kind of different areas here, right? So the front, sure. um, what is the ambiance that you're trying to go for in the front? Well, we, we, we tried to think of things that w w inspired us and things that uh, kind of were notes back to Japan and going to the fish market early in the morning. Every little stall has multiple lights of all different kind of light bulbs and light fixtures. So. It was a really eclectic mix, so we wanted to do something like that here. So we, we made the whole kind of volume go through the restaurant with all different kinds of lamps. We liked the, the, the use of woods, natural woods in Japan, so we, we went up and got reclaimed um, uh, factory wood, and we built our own bar and built all our booths, and then just used like really simple um, details and tones throughout the restaurant. It's really nice, and back here, it almost feels like you're outside. Right? Exactly. You have the trees, kind of, um, and then up here we see anime. Exactly. So that's one thing that you know I've always loved about Japanese is that kind of like that, that playful uh, touches that they do with uh, the way they view outside and inside, where they bring the outside into their living spaces or their dining spaces. So when we first found this real estate, it was like a perfect match. We're like, we have to have the restaurant here. It's really nice, and it's much larger inside than it mm -hmm. looks from the outside. Exactly, so very it's a deceiving. Nice surprise. Yes, yeah. totally. Create that energy. <laughs> so when we um, talk about the inspirations there, how did you bring those into the menu? What are the kind of categories that you have on the menu? Sure. Well, we we based roughly on the grill, and we have three different types of grill that we do. And in Japan, yakitori or uh, grilled birds, and especially grilled chicken, is big. And we love that, how it's like different parts you can break down and very simple cooking techniques so you get the really true flavor of the, the protein that you're eating. Um, so we, we incorporated those grills into the restaurant. Okay. And then we, we're very playful and we love to go to the, the farmer's market, the green city market. We love the seasonality. So we bring a lot of things that are local into those cooking techniques. And that's how we come up with very interesting kind of notes and the unexpected cuisine that we do. Yeah, and really high quality of the dishes exactly. too, right? Especially because you're resourcing those local ingredients. Exactly. All mm -hmm. right, so what would you say are three maybe really interesting and uh, top sellers on your mm -hmm. menu? Well, we'll probably have three of them today. So uh, we picked out uh, three dishes that we just love that are seasonal. Uh, one is a, a grilled octopus uh, with summer beans, mushrooms, and egg yolk sauce. 
and one is a play on uh, okonomiyaki, which okay, is a Japanese pancake. pancake with uh, cabbage and spot prawn. And one, which we, I think everyone loves, is a, is a bowl of noodles. And it's, uh, it's a ramen, and we call it uh, the Logan Square Poser Ramen. And uh, the Poser Ramen comes from um, David Chang in New York, who has Momofuko, and he said that anyone trying to make ramen outside of Japan is just posing. <laughs> so it's a little nod of the hat to him. OK. So why, how about we try some of those dishes? Love to. All right, let's try um, the octopus first. Sure. How about that? OK. You're not afraid of octopus, are you? Not at all. Okay. And it looks Excellent. delicious. After you. So the octopus is grilled over the bidro coals, uh, the enoki mushrooms, and then we make this kind of like sauce a la minute with all those things just like coming through. It's delicious. <laughs> And that's a good thing. Yeah, it looks so simple, but there's such complex flavors mm -hmm. in there. And you can actually taste, are these, what kind of beans are these? The regular summer string bean. You can actually taste the, the flavor of this mm -hmm. in that sauce as well. That's the whole idea is that all the flavors need to sing and they need to be themselves. We don't want to mask things. We want everything to be noted, but also flavors of interest, like the three-year-old ponzu that we use, the shiromizo, a little bit of Thai chili. It's not overpowering, but you get that in the sauce as it's made. Very good. Okay, that was really delicious. Excellent. So let's move on to the pancake dish, sure. the okonomiyaki, right? Sure, okonomiyaki. All traditional right. Japanese street food that you can find on street corners of Osaka or Tokyo. And we loved it so much that we're like, we have to do something with this, this whole idea. And what we've done here is we use spot prawns, which are inside of the pancake with chives and miso and chili. And then we have a uh, cabbage slaw. And then we have uh, bonito flake, which is skipjack or, or shaved dry tuna. That gives it this really nice smokiness. Yeah, and that's what you're, we're smelling right now. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and it looks beautiful. The, the cabbage on top is exactly. so pretty. Exactly, I'll slice this up for you so yeah. you can take a bite. And what the, uh, the sauce is, is that we've typically with a mayonnaise base, but we're like, ah, mayonnaise. And so we make uh, a, tip of, uh, a sauce that's made out of chickpea puree. So it has the, the mouthfeel and the richness of mayo without having all that fat. Yeah, so. a much healthier version. Exactly. It's also a spicy pickled uh, eggplant as well. I could have this every day. Mm -hmm. It's spicy. Exactly. <laughs> it's a nice surprise, actually. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. That's why we gave you the undertone to drink with it. <laughs> Perfect combination. Mm -hmm, exactly. And what else is in here besides the spot prawns? Spot prawns, chives. Um, there's Thai chili in, in there as well. Uh, we have pickled eggplant, uh, which also has some chili. So we like that kind of like the richness from the chickpea. And then the spiciness, it kind of like balances itself out. So we, we like that kind of like juxtaposition between both. That eggplant is delicious. Yep. And then the cleanliness of the cabbage. Yeah. So. It's a really nice uh, combination of flavors and, exactly. and textures, too. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, ramen on the menu. Yes, obviously. we do. A nice comfort dish. That's right. Right? Okay. Yeah. And what kind do you serve? Uh, the poser ramen? This is the, the Logan Square poser ramen. Okay. And, and, and it's what's with in there? Crispy pig's tail, um, it's uh, pork belly, uh, the ramen itself, poached egg, umeboshi, which is salted plum. Thank you. And um, let me just put this right here. Nori, chives, uh, mustard, and nori and the umeboshi, the pickle plum here. All right. Well, so, I'm going to taste um, the broth mm, first. Sure. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. There's two ways that, we, that in Japan, everyone will eat noodles in a different way. So some people have all the broth first and save everything for the end. Okay. Some people eat everything together. So it's up to you on which way There's you'd like to... Uh, <laughs> you know, do this. My favorite way is drink all the broth, and then at the end you have the noodles and the egg that's that's lightly poached, and then I mix in the pigtail with everything, but all right, I cool. think we'll just put this all in at this moment. Yeah. So crispy pigtail and mustard. Let's see, we'll break that up for you. And then you can oh, see wow, all the pork, and then so here's good. the egg, and we'll just break that egg yolk and all this beautiful egg. We'll make this sauce like yep. super, super rich. 
This is a hearty this is bowl hearty. of uh, soup right this here. This is a serious preparation, <laughs> not for the lighthearted. <laughs> not at all, but so perfect for Chicago winters. Exactly. Don't be scared. N not at all. After you. That's delicious. Mm. It's all about It tastes the like it's been cooking in Simmerine forever. It has been. And it, actually, it's all about the combination of stocks that we do. So we have pork stock and chicken stock and dashi, which is a typical uh, Japanese stock with uh, seaweed and uh, skipjack or the bonito. Mm -hmm. And we bring those together uh, and we balance it out with miso. So you have that kind of richness and that umami flavor. And then it gives you the opportunity to taste everything else. And it's not overpowering, but it's a super rich dish that's just like great. It, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to dig in and get a piece of the pork. Do it. Don't be nervous. Oh, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> You have to try the pig's tail too. I'll get that ready for you. This could be the most exciting part of the whole dish is right there. That's for you. <laughs> well, you have to join me. You can try I something will. else here. Okay. And the, uh, the cucumbers are pickled, so you have this beautiful acid that cuts through all the, the egg yolk and the richness, so you can eat the whole bowl without feeling too overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a decent mm. sized portion. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the times you get this huge bowl. Um, exactly. That you can probably share with a few people, but this mm -hmm. is nice. All right, so crispy pig's tail. Yes. And where's your piece? We need to get one for you. Okay, also. let's do it. <laughs> we'll kind of we'll, we'll dig in. It's my favorite part. There you go. Well, that's a big one too. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. That makes the dish. That is so good. Mm -hmm. I would never think that it was pig's tail. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the crispiness. It actually stays crispy even once it mm -hmm. gets um, you know, dunked into the broth. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's the best um, fried thing in a mm -hmm. long time. Well, that's a, you know, the, my two favorite parts of a pig are the head and the tail. That's what we get from the head cheese or you know, the braised head. And then the tail it has the best meat because it's always moving. <laughs> It's a nice way of explaining exactly. it. It's rich, um, but not mm -hmm. too much. It's, it's really nice exactly. texture, too. And it brings a, a great balance between two. So. I love it. I will finish this whole bowl uh, okay. in a minute, but we're going to skip to dessert. After the curry ice cream. Curry ice cream. That's, uh, that's a new one. It is, for sure. So we, uh, most people, when they do any kind of curry desserts, and they use powdered curries, mm -hmm. and especially Indian-type curries. And what we do is we make curry the traditional Thai way and also the uh, Malay, Malay curry is also done similar. But we use fresh galangal, fresh ginger, fresh turmeric, fresh chilies, cilantro root, parsley root, and we put it in a mortar and pestle and we make it into this mash of fresh ingredients wow. and then steep it into the ice cream base so it's not overwhelming and dry and just too much. So. Please. Yeah, and it doesn't taste anything of that powder. That's right? exactly right. So it's all fresh product, and you kind of get that in the, uh, yeah, the end. Okay. There's also some uh, coconut macaroons. Oh, so it's nice like kind little of a, topping there. Exactly. Okay, when you said curry, I really thought of a curry dish. Mm -hmm. That tastes nothing like it. Exactly. It's the nice hint of spice, but mm -hmm. it's sweet still. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious, um, and the color is lovely mm -hmm. too. It's very green. It has those tones of, you can taste the, all the ingredients. You can taste the ginger. You can taste the galangal. You yeah, see absolutely. The turmeric color is beautiful. It's so really nice. Mm -hmm. It's a really different and unique combination, but it, it works. Thank God. And the coconut macaroon is delicious. Excellent. Well, that was really delicious. and. A, Kind of nice tour through your menu as Excellent. well. Thank you so much for preparing those well, dishes for us. Thanks for coming. So you have, um, besides you show, you have some news coming up, right? You have something else opening up soon. We do. Um, we were so excited about uh, our barkeep, Alex Bachman. He's doing such an incredible job. He's such incredible talent. We decided we have to do something with this. And we're opening a, uh, a tavern that's a cocktail-focused tavern called Billy Sunday which will be in Logan Square and coming in end of October. Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm going to eat my way through the U-Show menu. So well, thank you so much. Thanks Jeff. for coming.
We'll see it you at Billy's nice Sunday. Absolutely. Welcome everyone. My name is Matt Cunningham. I work at the River Oyster Bar downtown Miami. We are here to feature one of our specialty drinks here. It's called the Dark and Stormy, made with fresh pureed ginger roots, fresh lime, a little sweetener, and fever tree mixers. We make it with a Gosling's Black Seal Rum from Bermuda, where the drink originated. Homemade fresh ginger beer. Slight shake. Topped off with a fever tree mixer. And a lime. Enjoy.